of growth. So progress in the adjuvant space and neoadjuvant space, I would say, and, and enough to be practice changing in the weeks ahead. Um, but, I, you know, the number I use in my head is it's somewhere around 10, not more than 20 percent of patients or even candidates for surgery and neoadjuvant. Unfortunately, most are or metastatic. Is that the same number in your all's head? Has that shifted any much? I think it's, it's increasing just better. because of this strategy of the locally advanced group. We're and picking up more. Yes. So but in terms of most, still the majority of patients a, probably are... probably about a fifth of all patients, yeah, and, plus and minus. Uh, fair enough. But So unlike the other cancers where adjuvant is king and metastatic <laughs> is the minority, we're the other way around. So George, i let you take the lead on this and kind of setting the stage on metastatic disease. Where are we with the base regimen today that we walk into ASCO with and, and the management of that disease from a big picture? So we have two regimens that we can choose in the front line, fulfurinox obviously and uh, gemcitabine, uh, NAPAC, ataxol. Uh, much like what has happened in the metastatic setting, I think what we're going to see in the adjuvant setting is there's a lot of patient selection, uh, what patients should go on, uh, which treatment. Um, fulfurinox certainly has a survival of 11.1 .1 months, so uh, people feel that it's uh, got good efficacy. It comes with side effects though. Lots of neutropenia, need for growth factor, some neuropathy as you would expect, and some diarrhea. Um, gemcitabine nabpacotaxol given weekly. Uh, relatively well tolerated, especially out in the community. Uh, this was you know, a trial that was done globally, so it applies to the everyday patient. Um, and so that's where we have to make our decision point. And so how do you do, do you that? you see that there are big differences between those two recipes in terms of outcome? It depends. So the trials were done, they're very different, in, especially in regards to But in your own hands, selection. I mean, when you think about it and making a decision, a patient I, I in front of you. I think they're uh, very similar. Um, and again, the toxicities are manageable. Would anybody counter that, that you think that one regimen is, I mean, I, I really hate this question in clinic. Yeah. You're describing these two mm -hmm. regimens to patients and one sort of feels easy and the other one feels hard. And I know that our staff to manage fulfurinox, the staff all has to get involved. There's a lot of uh, management there. It's going to be harder on that patient. And I'm thinking, well, what would I do to me in this setting? And I realize there may be some advantage to the three drug regimen over the two drug regimen. Does anybody push me back to say, no, I think we really should think three drug in most people, or no, we should think two drug. Kabir, what do you think? Yeah. I, I, You're I struggling think, with it too. I can see in, it in your faces. Yeah. You know, in the metastatic setting, the mindset is different than yeah. in the adjuvant setting, obviously, right? We're trying to treat that patient's disease and also provide them with the best quality of life possible. And, um, and every patient's different. And so... Is this um, back to colon cancer, where just get all the drugs in if we can, and whatever recipe you're talking about? I actually I, think I, that's, yeah. that rings true yeah. for this disease. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's some data now, uh, it came up in our neoadjuvant setting, but looking at giving fulfurinox and then switching and giving gemcitabine and apactitaxel, and we're seeing selectively in good performance data as patients survivals from European and U.S. studies 18 plus months. Yeah. I mean, this, I think it's, it's I, real. I think a sequence, I agree. I think a sequence, we, we have to think, I think we, let's take a step back and, you know, as everyone's saying, first of, f first of all, we have to think about the setting. This is a palliative setting. Mm -hmm. We often forget that we're primarily tr palliating our patients with chemotherapy. But of course, the secondary goal and an important goal is to improve survival. Mm -hmm. So we really have to put both in balance. We can't just think, I want to see a nice picture on a scan. I want to actually take care of my patients, make sure that my patient ends up having the best quality of life along with the quantity of life. That's why all these discussions sometimes about dose intensifications, weekly, bi-weekly, and others, I think that you really need to individualize your decisions based on the patient and based on these rational discussions, which sometimes are not that rational. But, but the, point, the point is, and I agree with, with Eileen fully and everyone else's input, is you know, when you look at three world data that comes from the US Oncology Database, that comes from your study uh, that you presented at, uh, at ASCO GI, there's a sense that if you sequence patients and you start with a doublet followed by a doublet, that your outcomes are very similar than if you actually throw what I call the whole kitchen sink. And now, that said, there's a subgroup of patients that will benefit mm -hmm. from Fulferinox. More so, we, we talked about the compass results. There's also those patients with uh, uh, 
with uh, the, the DDR, uh, HRD, and definitely the BRCA, they will benefit from the presence of the platinum and the iron and The topoisomerases are active here too. So I think, you know, uh, and, and this goes back to the point, we really need to know what that genetic profile of the tumor looks like or, and the genetic profile of the patient. And that may help us refine a little bit better as we learn more and more whether really we, we really need to expose patients to a three-drug regimen, even if they have fantastic perform for performance status, even if they're younger, that doesn't mean that essentially the crime, uh, you know, fits the punishment. You know, we